Act 1. Dusk. Flora sits alone on a moving train. Her suitcase is on the rack above her head. The train is approaching a station. Flora, already speaking, stands to lift down her suitcase. By the end of her first speech, she is on the station platform at Jumapur. <laughs> Jumapur. Wednesday, April the 2nd. Darling Nell, I arrived here on Saturday from Bombay after a day and a night and a day in ladies only. Stopping now and again to be revictualed through the window with pots of tea and proper meals on matinee trays, which, remarkably, you hand back through the window at the next station down the line where they do the washing up, and from the last stop, I had the compartment to myself with the lights coming on for me to make my entrance on the platform at Jumapur. The president of the Theosophical Society was waiting with several members of the committee drawn up at respectful distance, not quite a red carpet and brass band, but garlands of marigolds at the ready, and I thought there must be someone important on the train. Miss Crew! And it turned out to be me. Welcome to Jumapur. Which was very agreeable. Thank you. And as she How ni- is garlanded oh, by okay. Kumaraswamy. <laughs> Kum. How nice. Are you Mr. Kumar? Kumaraswamy. That is me. <laughs> is this your only luggage? <laughs> Leave it there. He claps his hand imperiously for assistance and then shakes hands enthusiastically with Flora. How do we do, Miss Crew? The handshake, which begins on the station platform, ends on the veranda of the Dak Bungalow, or guest house. The guest house requires a veranda and an interior, which includes or comprises a, a bedroom. On the veranda is a small table with at least two chairs. There is an electric light unlit and an oil lamp lit. The bedroom contains a bed under a mosquito net, a washed a washstand, a bedside table, an electric fan, and a punka. There is a door to a bathroom off stage. A servant, Nazrol, carries Flora's suitcase into the bedroom and then retreats to his quarters out of sight. Thank you. Welcome, my dear Miss Crew, and farewell. A day of rest. Thank you. You were so kind to. I will leave you. Tomorrow, a picnic. <laughs> Do you like temples? Well, I don't know. I'm sure I... Leave everything to me. Kumar Swami leaves, shouting in, the hin- shouting in Hindi for his buggy driver. The Shepperton Garden is now visible. Here, Mrs. Swan and Pike are having tea while occupied with a shoebox of Flora's letters. And in no time at all, I was installed in a little house. Two good-sized rooms under a tin roof with electric light. And an oil lamp, just in case. A veranda looking out at a rather hopeless garden, but with a good table and chair, which does very well for working. And a wicker sofa of sorts for not working. And round the back. I wish I'd kept the envelopes. They'd be worth something now, surely. The Indian ones, at least. Oh, but it's the wine, not the bottles. These letters are a treasure. They may be the only family letters anywhere. I dare say, since I'm the only family. Her writing sometimes. A kitchen bit with a refrigerator. A kitchen bit with a refrigerator, but Nazrul, my cook, and a bottle washer disdains the electric stove and makes his own arrangements on a little veranda of his own. My bedroom, apart from the electric fan, also has a punka, which is like a helmet worked by a punka walla who sits outside and flaps the thing by a system of ropes and pulleys, or would if he were here, which he isn't. And then <laughs> off the bedroom is a dressing room and bathroom combined with a tin tub and a shower with a head as big as a sunflower. A rainflower, of course. And all of this is under a big green tree with monkeys and parrots in the branches, and it's called the Duck Bungalow. Duck Bungalow? Although there is not a duck to be seen. Duck was the post. They were post houses when litters went by runner. Ah. I like to have two kinds of cake on the go. The Madeira is my own. I'm not really hungry. I wouldn't let that stop you, Mr. Pike, if you hope to get on my good side. I would love some. The Madeira? And you won't please call me Eldon. Thank you. Wonderful. I should think so. It's the excitement. There's nothing like these in the British Library, you know. The British Library? The University of Texas has flew our crew indexed across 22 separate collections. I still have the Biblioteca Nationale next week. 
The collected letters are going to be a year of my life. A whole year just to collect them? The notes, the notes. The notes is where the fun is. You can't just collect Flora Crew's letters into a book and call it the collected letters of Flora Crew. The correspondence of well-known writers is mostly written without a thought for the general reader. I mean, they don't do their own footnotes. So there's an opportunity here, which you might call a sacred trust. Edited by E. Cooper Pike. There isn't a page which doesn't need... Look, you see here? I had a funny dream last night about the queen's elm. Which queen? What elm? Why was she dreaming about a tree? So this is where I come in, wearing my editor's hat. To light in the darkness. It's a pub in the Fulham Road. Thank you. This is why God made poets and novelists, so the rest of us can get published. Would that be a chocolate cake? Why? Would you... No, I just thought, did your sister like chocolate cake particularly? What an odd thing to think. Flora didn't like chocolate in any form. Ah, that's interesting. May I? Pike takes the next page of the letter from the tea table. Flora approaches, accompanied by Kumaraswamy, who has a yellow parasol. The sightseeing with Picnic was something of a progress, with the president of the Theosophical Society holding a yellow parasol over me, while the committee bicycled alongside, sometimes two to a bike, and children ran before and behind. I feel like a carnival float representing empire, or depending on how you look at it, the subjugation of the Indian people. And of course you're right, darling, but I never saw anyone less subjugated than Mr. Kumas Kumaraswamy. We have better temples in the South. I am from the South. You are right to be discriminating. Did I seem discriminating? I'm sure it wasn't their fault. The insides of churches. I understand you completely, Miss Crew. But I don't know what I'm trying to say. That is not a requirement. I'm afraid I'm without religion, you see. I do see. Which religion are you afraid you are most without? Oh, Mr. Kumaraswamy. Turning a phrase may do for Bloomsbury, but I expect better from you. And I told him about Herbert's lady decorator being asked on. Her deathbed was what was her religion, and telling the priest, I'm afraid I worship mauve. For me, it is gray. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to like India. <laughs> Who was Herbert? Wells. Ah, H.G. Wells? Really? You don't mean he and Flora. You should see your face. Flora met him not long before she went out. Out? To India. It must have been around Christmas or New Year. I think I got a postcard from Paris. Flora loved Paris. Here, look. Is that it? Yes, yes, no. 1924. It's a souvenir of the Olympic Games. Oh, yes, the hurdler. Flora apologized publicly in the Chelsea Arts Club. No medals for us in the hurdles. Is that true, Eleanor? Now, Eldon, you are not allowed to write a book. Not if you were to eat the entire cake. The collected poems was a lovely surprise, and I'm sure the collected letters will be splendid. But biography is the worst possible excuse for getting people wrong. Far, India likes me. My lecture drew a packed house, Mr. C's house, in fact, and a much more sensible house than mine. Built round a courtyard with a flat roof all round, so I had an audience and the gods like gods in the audience. And it all went terribly well until... Miss Crew, in her wisdom and beauty, has agreed to answer questions. And the very first one went. Miss Crew, is it said you are an intimate friend of Mr. H.G. Wells? And I thought, God, how unfair, to have come all this way to be gossiped about as if one were still in the Queen's Elm. A public house in the Fulham area of Chelsea. But it turned out nothing was meant by it except... Does Mr. Wells write his famous books with a typewriter or a pen and ink? With a pen and ink, a waterman fountain pen, a present from his wife. Not that I had the least idea. Herbert showed a small inclination to write his famous books while I was around. F.C. had met Wells no earlier than December, and the affair was therefore brief, possibly the weekend of January 7th and 8th, which he spent in Paris. And after which there was a reception with lemonade and Indian scotch. And delicious snacks and conversation. Darling, it was so moving. They read the New Statesman and the T.L.S. as if they were the Bible in parts. Well, I don't mean the Bible, but you know what I mean, and they know who wrote what about whom. It's like these children with their faces jammed to the railings of an unattainable park. They ask me. What's your opinion of Gertrude Stein, Miss Crew? Oh, yes, Gertrude Stein. And I can't bring myself to t say she's a poisonous old baggage who's traveling on a platform ticket. 
S.C. went to tea with Gertrude Stein and her companion Alice B. Toklas in Paris in 1922. The legend that Stein threw her out of the apartment because F.C. asked for the recipe of Miss Toklas's chocolate cake cannot be trusted. <laughs> F.C. did not like chocolate in any form. But I met my painter. Miss Crew, may I congratulate you on your lecture? I found it most interesting. Thank you. I was surprised you did not mention Virginia Woolf. I seldom do. Have you met George Bernard Shaw? Yes, I was nearly in one of his plays once. But you are not an actress. No, that was the trouble. What do you think of Juniper? Well, I only arrived the day before yesterday, but... Of course! How, how absurd of me. <laughs> not at all. I was going to say that my first impression... Juniper is not in any case to be compared with London. Do you live in Bloomsbury? No, I live in Chelsea. Chelsea. Of course, my favourite part of London. Oh, you... I hope to visit London one of these days, the Chelsea of Turner and the Pre-Raphaelite the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood. Rosetti lived in Cheenwalk, Holman Hunt lived in the Old Church Street, the hireling shepherd was painted in Old Church Street. What an inspiration it would be for me to visit Chelsea. You are a painter? Yes, Nira does. How do you do? I am a top hole. Thank you. May I give you a present? Oh. Please do not judge it too harshly, Miss Crew. Thank you. Of course, I work in oils, Windsor Newton. If it would like to, if if it would please you to sit for your portrait, I would like to repay I would like to repay you for your super fine portrait and words of the rough and tumble of literary life in London. Really? I would, very much. And he gave me a pencil sketch of myself holding forth on the literary life. She mentions a pencil sketch. Do you know what happened to it? Oh, uh, I'm sure I never saw it. I would have remembered if it had been among what was called her effects. It was only one suitcase. Do you still have it? What? Her suitcase? Heavens, it was battered old thing even then, and being always on the move, Eric and I, one sheds things. You threw away Flora Cruz's suitcase. What is it you're up to, Eldon? A luggage museum? Really, you're like an old woman about her. Except, of course, that I'm not. She was Flora Cruz. Well, if so, where was everybody 60 years ago? Good morning. Wait, Ben has to read this narration. Oh, okay. You can't just ignore that no part. No one else wanted to read it Sophia. earlier for the stage. The cups. Pike takes one or two more letters from the shoebox and scans them. At the guest house, Narad Dawes arrives by bicycle. He has his wooden workbox strapped to his pillion rack. His folded easel is strapped to his back. He rides one-handed, holding a canvas in his free hand. Flora, in her cornflower blue dress, comes out from the interior. Yeah, I love that. Good morning. Yeah, I love that. Mr. Crew, here I am. A little late. Forgive me. I didn't realize. I've been writing a letter. Does this look alright? Very, very good. Now, this will be nice. We'll both be working. Poet and painter. Work in progress. Daz unstraps his workbox and establishes himself on the veranda. Flora establishes herself at her work table. Pike is puzzling over a letter. She says, paint on paper. Yes. A smudge of paint on paper. Perhaps my soul will stay behind as a smudge of paint on paper. She's refer referring to an actual painting, isn't she? I don't know. And undressed. She says undressed, like a nude, on paper. That would be watercolor, wouldn't it? What would? There isn't any it. Well, if it doesn't mean a portrait of Flora undressed, what do you think it means? As much or as little as you like. Isn't that the point of being a poet? No, I'm not a poet, but it really is quite specific. The deserted house. Where is the bit? Between your teeth, Eldon. Here, in an empty house, perhaps my soul will stay behind as a smudge of paint on paper, as if I'd always been here. Like Rada? Rada. The most beautiful of the herdswoman undressed. <laughs> I was thinking the exact same thing. Uh, well, the portrait, as it happens, is on canvas and Flora is wearing her cornflower dress. Portrait? 
She mentions the portrait somewhere. It was rolled up in the suitcase. Eleanor, do you mean there's a portrait of Flora? Would you like to see it? Oh my god. It's fairly ghastly, like an Indian cinema poster. I think I know where it is, but I'll need you to get it down for me. Should we go in? We're about to lose the sun. Oh my god, but this is- Oh my god, there's never been one, not a real portrait. That's true, apart from the Paris portrait, but that was on canvas too. The Paris portrait? Yes. Flora's first time in Paris, she was driving an ambulance officially in the last year of the 1418 war. So she was 23, I suppose, when she met Modigliani. Modigliani? Oh, Flora met everybody. Not that Modigliani was anybody at the time. A portrait by Modigliani? I was nine at the Armistice, so that was, my goodness, 66 years ago. I'm coming up to 75, you know. Eleanor, I can hardly believe my ears. I'm afraid so. I was born in 1909, but thank you, Eldon. Have another slice of cake. No, thank you. I, excuse me, a painting of Flora by Modigli... Yes, a nude. A nude! <laughs> I never saw it myself. I was at school, of course, and then it was too late. Too late? Yes, isn't that bad luck? The Technicolor Flora... Like a cork in a storm, washed up on top of a wardrobe in a bungalow in Shepperton, and the Modigliani, which would have been paid for the bungalow several times over, burned to ashes in a bathtub in the Ritz. By now, she has assembled the tea tray, and she leaves with it. Do you want to me again? Pike totters after her. Flora, in her blue dress, is at the table on the veranda, writing in her notebook with a fountain pen. She pauses, thinking, sitting quite still. Her feet are bare and her shoes are placed neatly to one side. Daz is painting her portrait. Yes, I am in heat, like a bride in a bath, without secrets soaked in heated air that liquefies to the touch and floods, shortening the breath. Yes, I am discovered, heat has found me out. A stain that stops at nothing, not the squeezed gates or soft gutters. It slicks into the press that prints me to the sheet. Yes, think of a woman in a house of net that strains the oxygen out of the air. Thickening the night to Indian ink, or thank if you prefer. Flora has unconsciously crossed her legs, which brings Daz's work to a halt. He waits patiently. She notices that Daz has stopped. Oh. No, no, please. Be comfortable. I'm sorry. There, is that how I was? You are very patient with me. I think your nature is very kind. Do you think so, Mr. Daz? I am sure of it. My, may I ask you a personal question? That is a personal question. Oh my goodness, is it? I always think so. It always feels like one. Carte Blanche is what you're asking, Mr. Doss. Am I to live myself there before you? My question was only about your poem. At least you knew it was personal. I will not ask about it now, of course. On that understanding, I will answer it. My poem is about heat. Oh. Thank you. I resume my pose. Pen to paper, legs uncrossed. You know, you are the first man to paint my toenails. Actually, I am occupied in the folds of your skirt. Ah, in that you are not the first. <laughs> you have been painted before? But of course you have. Many times, I expect. You know, Mr. Dawes, your nature is much kinder than mine. Fleur resumes, Daz resumes. Anish Dawes has comes into the Shepperton garden. He has a soft briefcase. He sits in one of the garden chairs. Das, I'm considering whether to ask you a delicate question as between friends and artists. Oh, Miss Crew, I am hard. transported beyond my most fictional not going to do a British accent? Fellowship. This is a red-letter day without dispute. If you're going to be so Indian, I shan't <laughs> ask it. Yeah, jeez, mate. <laughs> yeah, so much for the British accent. But well, I, I know they're less Indian. Indian. Than I am. Wait, it says he's Indian. <laughs> well, we knew that, but it's still funnier with a British accent because I like doing a British accent. Okay, you could if you tried. I'm not sure. I'm going to ask you now. <laughs> uh, then you need not, dear Miss Crew. You considered the unasked, the almost asked question united us for a moment in its intimacy. We came together in your mind like a spark in a vacuum glass, and the redness of the day's letter will not be denied. <laughs> you must stop doing it, Mr. Doss. 
You wish me to be less Indian? <laughs> Say that, but I think what I meant was for you to be more Indian, or at any rate Indian, not Englished up and all over me like a Labrador and knocking things off tables with your tail. So wag it should you, Mr. Doss, to compare my mind to a vacuum. You only do it with us. I don't believe that you look... That left to yourself, you can't have an ordinary conversation without jumping backwards through hoops of delight with whoops of delight. I think I mean, actually, I do know what I mean. I want you to be with me as if you would be if I were Indian. An Indian Miss Crew? Oh dear, that is a mental construction, which has no counterpart in the material world. So is a unicorn, but you can imagine it. You can imagine it, but you cannot mount it. <laughs> Imaginate was all I was asking in my case. Oh! Oh my gracious, I had no intention, I assure you. No, no, you cannot unwag your very best wag. You cleared the table. The brick of wag is on the Wilton. The specimen vase, the snuff box, the souvenir of Broadstairs. You are cruel to me, Miss Crew. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't want to be. It's my nature. Okay. Please come out from behind your easel. Look at me. May we fall silent, please? I prefer to work in silence. Everything. I'm very sorry. The shadow has moved. I must correct it. Yes, it has moved. We cannot be corrected. We must wait for tomorrow. I'm so sorry. Daz resumes working at the easel. Flora maintains her pose, but screws the cap onto her fountain pen. Okay, so yeah, Anish is actually just referred to as a Mrs. Swan who comes from the bungalow with tea for two on a tray and two kinds of cake. Oh, so this is me, right? Yeah. Let me help you. I've forgotten your sugar. Actually, I don't take it. Oh, I thought you'd be more Indian. <laughs> they settle the tray and themselves at the garden table. This is so kind of you. Oh no, your letter was irresistible. Having an artist's tea was beyond my fondest dreams for my... dotage. Well, let it sit a minute. Do you think you can take after your father? I don't know. I would like to think so, but my father was a man who suffered for his beliefs, and I have never had to do that. So perhaps I will never know. I really meant being a painter. You are a painter like your father. Oh. Yes. Yes, I am a painter like my father. Though not at all like my father, of course. Your father was an Indian painter, you mean? An Indian painter? Well, I'm as Indian as he was, but yes. I suppose I am not a particularly Indian painter. Not an Indian painter particularly, or rather... Not particularly an Indian painter. Yes, but then, nor was he, apart from being Indian. As you are. Yes. Though you are not at all like so convoluted. No. Yeah, they're like they're using so many words to say so little. Different kind of artist, a portrait painter, as you know. I can't say I do, Mister Daz. Until I received your letter, your father was unknown to me. In fact, the att the attribution "unknown Indian artist" described the situation exactly. He was not unknown in Jumapur. If indeed it was your father who did the portrait of Flora. Oh, the portrait is certainly my father's work, Mrs. Swan. You cannot imagine my feelings when I saw the book in the shop window. My excitement. You see, I carry my copy everywhere. He takes the collected letters from his briefcase. The dust jacket has the portrait of Flora by Narad Dawes. Well, I hope there will be lots like you, Mr. Dawes. There will be no one like me, Mrs. Swan. It was not the book, of course, but the painting on the jacket and reproduced inside. If only he could have known that one day his portrait of Flora Crew. He might have been more pleased to be in the window of an art gallery than a bookshop. Perhaps not. I'm sure my father never had a single one of his paintings reproduced, and that is an extraordinary pleasure for an artist. I know. The painting under one's hand is everything, of course, unique. But replication, that is popularity. Put us on book jackets, calendars, biscuit tins. Oh, he would have been quite proud. By the way, what were your father's beliefs? Why, we are Hindu. You said he had suffered for his beliefs. Oh, I meant his opinions. How did he suffer? He was put in prison. Really? By whom? By you. <laughs> <laughs> by me? Oh, by us. 
But how did we know what his opinions were? It seems he took part in some actions against the Raj during the Empire Day celebrations in Jumapur. Then he was put in prison for his actions, not his opinions, Mr. Daz, and obviously deserved what he got. Damn, Damn all right. Oh my Thanks. god. Victoria Sponge or Battenberg? Oh. The sponge is my own. Raspberry jam included. I would love some, thank you. Tea? But all that must have been before you were born. Oh yes, I was the child of my father's second marriage. I was born long after independence, and my father went to prison in Jumapur in 1930. 1930? But that was when Flora was in Jumapur. Yes, I know. That is why I am here. Mrs. Swan, oh God, I to talk again. Flora takes the cap off of her fountain pen. Is <clears throat> this morning? I hope so. Why do you ask that? Has something happened? Oh, no. Well, I thought if we were friends, I'll ask you to write something on the drawing you did of me. Oh, but that was only a poor scribble. Not even a good likeness. Even so. Oh. He's taken aback, but then realizes he's being teased. You are. <laughs> 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 yes, you won't get anywhere with that. Nambi panty time. <laughs> <laughs> Nimbu panty. Wait. Yeah, I'm Nazrul as well. Oh, he's a servant. Nimbu panty. Thank you, Nazrul. Shukriya. Nazrul responds and leaves. Actually, I have something for you. A little present. You. You mustn't keep giving me things, Mr. Das. Well, it is kind of a birthday present, you see. Actually, not birthday presents when it isn't my birthday. Daz gives her an old but well-preserved book. It is green with a brown spine. In fact, it is a copy of Up the Country by Emily e Eden, 1866. I did not buy it. It is a book of my father's, which I would like you to have. Letters by an English lady traveling in India a hundred years ago. Oh, but this will be just my book. Thank you. Country, Emily Eden. Oh, it's a lovely present. Well, I will write to remind you of Jumapur and your friend and fellow artist, Nirad Das, and I will draw myself listening to you. Flora pours the Nimbupani, does writes on the pencil drawing with his own fountain pen, and settles down to draw her. When my father met Flora Crew, he had been a widower for several years, although he was still quite a young man, younger than her. Yes, the beginning of the hot weather in 1930. He had his 34th birthday on April 2nd, just after he met your sister. He had lost his wife to uh, cholera Color. and was Color. childless. <laughs> I knew Color. nothing about my father's life before me. In my earliest memory, my father was an old gentleman who spoke very little except when he sometimes read aloud to me. He liked to read in English. Robert Browning, Tennyson, Macaulay's Lays of Ancient Rome, and Dickens, of course. How surprising. Oh, yes. He went from a veran whoa, vernacular. vernacular school to Elphinstone College in Bombay. And you only have to look at Elphinstone College to see that it was built to give us proper English education. I meant in view of his opinions, but I spoke without thinking. Your father took part in actions against the British Raj and loved English literature, which was perfectly consistent of him. Laughs. Usually, the education succeeded admirably. In Jumapur, we were loyal as you would say, we had been loyal to the British right through the First War of Independence. The... what war was that? The Rising of 1857. Oh, you mean the mutiny. What did you call it? Dear Mrs. Swan, imperial history is merely... No, no, I promise you, I didn't come to give you a history lesson. You seem ill-equipped to do so. Damn. We were your Romans, you know. That's... You might have been your Normans. <laughs> grateful? That's neither here nor there. I don't expect I'd been grateful if a lot of Romans turned up and started laying down the law and teaching Latin and so forth. What a cheek is probably what I would have thought. Go away and take your roads and your baths with you. It doesn't matter what I would have thought. It's what I think now that matters. You spoke English. The... You speak English better than most young people I meet. Did you go to school here? 
No, I went to a convent school in... You were spreading a net for me, Mrs. Swan. What net would that be? Have some more cake. <laughs> Mrs. Swan, you are a very wicked woman. You advance a preposterous argument and try to fill my mouth with cake so I cannot answer you. I will resist you and your cake. <laughs> we were the Romans. We were up to date when you were a backward nation. The foreigners who invaded you found a third world country. Even when you discovered India in the age of Shakespeare, we already had our Shakespeare and our science, architecture, our literature, and art. We had culture older and more splendid. We were rich, after all. That's why you came. But he has misjudged. We made you a proper country. And when we left, you fell straight to pieces like Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> Look at the map. You should feel nothing but shame. Oh yes, I am a guest here, and I have been. <laughs> no, only provocative. Will you be going home? I... Would you like me to go? No. What do you mean? Oh. Home! I didn't mean I was a guest in England. England is my home now. I have spent half my life here. I'm married here. An English girl? Yes, we met at art school. Artists together. Actually, she was not a student. She was earning money as a model. Life class, you see. Of course. Is she still your model? No, my work is not figurative now. Well, what is it now? Well, deconstructive. What a shame. I can still draw if I wish. May I draw you? Oh no, the last thing I need. No, for myself. Oh. Why? <laughs> Only a little oh. sketch with a pencil. <laughs> we must, we must not, not resist when life strives to close one of its many circles. Oh, oh I don't I know. know. Hinduism? <laughs> <laughs> Alright then, you may draw me. It will make us friends. Anna How do you want to be friends with her? Block from his briefcase and begins to draw her. Flora and Dawes sit at the table with lemonade. While having tiffin on the very on the veranda of my bungalow, I spilled kedgeri on my dungarees. The day Kim Connor in my pajamas, looking like a queen. <laughs> Same dude. <laughs> I was buying chutney in the bazaar when a thug escaped from the chokey and killed a box wall of his loot, creating a hulaboo and landing himself in the middle of <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> and landing himself in the Mulligatawani. I was do lally at the Durbar. <laughs> Durbar. <laughs> it was sent to Blighty in a dually feeling, rather dicky, with a chop of cha and a chit for a cha chop peg. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and the Bera Sahib, who looked so puka in his topi, sent a coolie to the mem ship. Okay. But... No, no, well, you it, can't it... have mem sahib and sahib. That's cheating. And anyway, I've already said coolie. I concede, Miss Crew, you are the Hobson Jobson champion. You are chivalrous, Mr. Das. So I confess I had help. I found a whole list of Anglo Indian words in my bedside drawer for the benefit of travellers. But I know both languages, so you still win on handicap. Where did you learn everything, Mr. Das? From books. I like Dickens and Browning and Shakespeare, and of course. But my favorite is Agatha Christie, the mysterious affair at Styles. Oh, the woman is a genius! But I would like to write like Macaulay. Oh dear. I have to thank Lord Macaulay for English, you know. It was his idea when he was in the government of India that English should be taught to us all. He wanted to supply the East India Company with clerks, but he was sewing dragon's teeth. Instead of Babas, he produced lawyers, journalists, civil servants, he produced Gandhi. We have so many, many languages, you know, that English is the only language the, nation the nationalists can communicate in. That is a very good joke on Macaulay, don't you think? A nationalist, nationalist, Mr. Das. Ah, <laughs> that is a very interesting question. But we shouldn't have stopped all the time. It's getting late for you. I must work more quickly tomorrow. It's only half past ten. No, it's already April, and that is becoming late. Yes, it seems hotter than ever. Would you like some more lemonade? No, thank you. No lemonade. Miss Crew, you haven't looked at my painting yet. 
No, not yet. I'll, I never look. Do you mind? <laughs> no. You do, really. But once I asked the painter, can I look? And he asked why. When I paint a table, I don't have to show it to the table. That's so rude. I said, <laughs> yeah. I said you had been painted before. Only once. A portrait? Not in the way you mean. It was a nude. Are you watching? Oh. Unusually, he painted his friends clothed. For nudes, he used models. I believe I, I believe I was his friend, but perhaps not. Perhaps a used model only. It hardly matters. He was dead so soon afterwards. He was not so kind to me as you are. Do you have the painting? No. Where is it? Nowhere. A man I thought I might marry burned it. <laughs> that that, so my funny. goodness. What a red letter day we you are having. There's a man on a horse. We have already heard the horse. We do not see the horse. <laughs> good morning, Miss Crew, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yes, good morning. Do you know him? He is the assistant. May I get down a moment? <laughs> <laughs> of of course. Get down a what a beautiful animal. Assistant what? Cap Captain what? Durrance. Thank you. Come on up. Do join us. Oh, Durant it's Mr. Daz, isn't it? Good morning, sir. But we have never met. Oh, but I know you. And, Miss Crew, your fame precedes you. Thank you. And you? I'm from the residency. David Durrance. You. Oh, but look here. I'm, I'm interrupting the artist. Stop. May one look? Oh, I say. I'm along jolly well. Don't you think so, Miss Crew? I guess he is. So. I must be going. I have overstayed my time today. But we'll continue tomorrow. Did you find it? Yes. Perhaps a little earlier if it suits you. I can leave everything. Does prepares to remove the canvas from the easel. Why don't you leave the canvas too? It will be quite safe. Well, yes, alright. I have a drape for it. Thank you. He drapes a cloth over the canvas on the easel. Like shutting up the parrot for the night. There we are. Thank you for the lemonade, Miss Crew. An absolute treat. I promise you. Goodbye, sir. And yes, until tomorrow. He goes down the veranda steps and wheels his bicycle away. I'll put my shoes on. Sorry about my toes, but I like to wiggle them when I'm working. <laughs> this I'll only stay a moment. My chief asked me to look in just to make sure there's nothing we can do for you. Would you like some lemonade? No, nothing for me, really. We might have found you more comfortable quarters, you know, not quite so in the town. Did How you? How did you know I was here? I did go. Now, but... there's a point. Usually we know of the rivals because the first thing they do is drop, a drop in a card, but in your case, rumors in the bazaar, so to speak. Are you an old hand here, Miss Crew? No, but I've never been to India before. I came up from Bombay just a few days ago. But you are friends here, perhaps? No, I got on a ship and I came knowing no one. I had friends in England who have friends here. Actually, one friend. In June, prepare this friend? No, the friend, my friend, is in London, of course. Mr. Joshua Chamberlain. His friends are in different places in Rajputana and... Oh my god, it's southern again. And I will also be going to Delhi and then up to the Punjab, I hope. Now I see. And your friend in London has friends in Jumapur. Yes. Like Mr. Daz. No. Are you a policeman of some kind, Mr. Durrance? Me? No. I'm sorry if I sound like one. Well, you do a bit. I'm travelling with letters of introduction to a number of social clubs and literary societies. I speak on a subject of literary life in London in return for board and lodging. So, you see, I couldn't have taken advantage of your kindness without giving offence to my hosts. Uh, the game is different here. By putting up at the residency, you would have gained respect, not lost it. Thank you. But what about self-respect? Well, as long as all is well. So you are following in Chamberlain's footsteps. All is explained. I explained it. But yes, I am. He spoke in Jumapur three years ago on the subject of empire. <clears throat> yes. Is he a good friend? Well... Did you know he was some sort of a communist? I thought he might be. He stood twice for Parliament as the communist candidate. I amuse you. 
That's all right. Amusing our distinguished visitors is among my duties. Well, don't be so stuffy. Uh, how long will you be with us? I'm expected to be in Jaipur, but they don't mind when I come. I'm sure you'll have a marvelous time. There are wonderful things to see. Meanwhile, please consider yourself an honorary member of the club. Mention my name, but I'll put you in the book. Thank you.